I've set up hundreds of websites and created the perfect formula to set your website up for huge traffic growth. And I've boiled it down to 10 steps that you need to do for your new website to ensure that your foundation is in order. And the first thing is to choose the right DNS. And here I can really recommend Cloudflare. It's always been in the top three fastest DNS and you get a lot of extra functionality entirely free. You get the Cloudflare DNS that loads your website in multiple regions depending on where the visitor is visiting your website. But you also get speed optimization happening at DNS level. This means that your website will be compressed. Both the CSS and the JavaScript that is used to execute your website, it's compressed on DNS level, which makes it even faster. You can also enable early signals and many more of these small settings that ensure that your website loads as fast as possible. And that's what it's all about. We want a fast loading website. No one wants to sit and wait around for your website to load. They want it to load immediately and get the answer. Not only are all these features for free, but you can also set up email forwarding. So all the emails sent to your domain will be forwarded to your Gmail if you're using that, for instance. Again, completely free. And from 1st of March, you have to verify your sender verification. This is a requirement from Gmail and Yahoo, and you can also do this through Cloudflare. So Cloudflare just has so many benefits to offer, and you can do it all for free. Next up, you have to choose your hosting. And here, speed, backup, support, and uptime are the most important elements to look at. And depending on the type of website you have, then I like to use WordPress. So I always go for manage WordPress hosting. That means that the server that I get has been tailored to make WordPress websites perform the best possible. And this is why I always look for managed WordPress hosting. And you can still get it fairly cheap. I do recommend choosing either Kinsta, which is a more premium solution, or Cloudways, where you also have the option to buy the Cloudflare Enterprise CDN. But both Cloudways and Kinsta I've been using, and they have 24 seven support, and you can chat with WordPress experts. So that means if you have any issues with your WordPress website, then you can easily chat with them and get them to help you fix the issues. They also have a lot of hosting knowledge overall, so they can also help with that. But what I also like with both Cloudways and Kinsta is that they also take it a step further and they offer image optimization. They offer caching on server level and so many more speed optimization things that help your website load faster. So not only if you go with Cloudflare, you get it on DNS level, but now you also get it on a hosting level. And we will take it a step further a little bit later. But these are elements that ensure that your website loads as fast as possible. And that's why your hosting is so important. And the third thing you want to choose is your CMS, the type of website you want to go with. And here I always choose WordPress. Webflow is a good alternative, but they are not near WordPress. More than 50% of the websites worldwide are built with WordPress. It's just that good. You get the option to install so many plugins, themes, and just the ecosystem surrounding WordPress is incredible. That's why I always go with WordPress because whatever it is that I need, then there's a plugin for it or a solution in some forum. If you go with a solution such as Webflow or even Framer, then your hosting options, your speed optimization, and everything is super limited. Whereas with WordPress, you can really tailor your setup to be as optimized as possible. And with so many hosting options that are tailored for WordPress websites, it just makes sense to choose WordPress. And by the way, I'm running a giveaway where you can get a website review where I'll review your website and record myself doing it for 20 to 30 minutes. And then I'll tell you all the opportunities I see for you to grow organically. There's a link in the first comment and in the description on how you participate. And I'll choose 10 winners, 15 of February. And now with the hosting DNS and the CMS ready, it's time to choose your theme. And for WordPress, it's super important you choose a lightweight theme because there are so many bloated themes out there where you buy a theme that can basically do everything, but you only need maybe 10% of it. So a theme like Cadence or Generate Press and even Astra, they are super optimized and I can really recommend them. You can also do basically everything with them. If you do need more customized options, you can also go with Elementor, but it is a bit more bloated, but it does make it easier to build websites. And remember that UX, user experience, is a ranking factor. That's why the theme is so important. You want a lightweight theme that loads fast and is easy to navigate. As the fifth point, you want to install some plugins to enhance the experience of using WordPress. And I always install four plugins. Try to keep this as a minimal because the more plugins you install, the more code needs to be loaded on your website and the slower your website is. 
But the four plugins I always install are RankMath, IU Bender, WP Rocket, and Short Pixel. Those are my four core plugins. IU Bender is for my cookie solution, which is the cookie pop-up you always see on all websites. With IU Bender, you can also generate a privacy policy, a cookie policy, and even terms of conditions. So you definitely need the cookie policy and the privacy policy. So generate that immediately. The terms and conditions are not mandatory. You can do it if you need it. If you're selling anything on your website, whether it's services or specific items, then you need terms and conditions. But IU Bender just makes it so easy to generate these pages, but there are a lot of options out there. I just like IU Bender because it's optimized, it loads fast, and it doesn't affect my speed. WP Rocket I use for speed optimization. So this is where we take it a step further because we have already optimized on DNS level, hosting level, but now we also optimize on our own website. So here WP Rocket will enable caching, but it will also compress your files, load them delayed and optimize your images, lazy load the images, and it will basically do everything that you need to ensure that your website loads as fast as possible. Short Pixel also helps with this because Short Pixel is used to optimize your images and it's super efficient. They even have two plugins. They have one for optimizing your images but they also have a plugin that will resize your images and always ensure that the image loaded on your website will be loaded in the right size, depending on whether it's mobile, desktop, or tablet that you're visiting the website from. And the last plugin is RankMath. And RankMath is an SEO plugin. And even though WordPress is super SEO optimized out of the box, RankMath takes it a step further and allows you to build some EEAT, customized schema, and many more things. But if you choose Rank Math, I will recommend you to go in and set up your local SEO. Whether you're focused on local SEO or not, it doesn't really matter. You really need to go in and set this up. Because here you tell Google that you're a real person or business. You enter your address, your business name, your about page, contact page. But you also enter something called same as. And the same as attribute is basically telling Google... Where are you available on other websites such as LinkedIn, Twitter? Maybe you have a company profile somewhere else. Now you have the basic setup and now you want to start creating pages. So of course you want a front page, but you also want an about page and a contact page because you need this for EAT. And once you have the about page and the contact page, then ensure that you enable it in rank math. So you choose those specific pages so Google knows what is your about page and what is your contact page. You also want to set up an author page and the author page is about you. And here you need to include an image, of course, your name and a lot of descriptions about who you are, why people should trust you. And if you have been part of any podcast or maybe in a TV, then highlight it there as well, because these are signals to the reader, but also to Google that you are an authority. You also want to set up a disclaimer page that if you're using affiliate links or there is some specific elements of your content that you want to highlight, Ensure that you write this in a disclaimer page because it also shows Google that you have a disclaimer page and you take these things seriously. As point seven, you want to go in and set up Google Search Console, Google Analytics, and Bing Webmaster Tools. And you want to do this immediately as you launch your website because this will basically just crawl your website and start to give you data that you can use to optimize your website further. Google Analytics is basically for how people are using your website, how long they're staying, what are they clicking on. Google Search Console is how your website is performing on Google. What queries do you get impressions on? What queries do you get clicks from? What are your average positions and so on. So you get a lot of data in Google Search Console and Google Analytics and the same with Bing Webmaster Tools. It's like Google Search Console, but just for Bing. And the faster you set it up, the more data you can start to gather because it doesn't gather data until you set it up. It's so important. There's so many golden nuggets to find in there to improve your content and your website. For example, one use case is that you've written a piece of content and now it's slowly ranking, but you can see that it's not ranking that well. Then you can go into Google Search Console. You can see what queries does it show up on but it doesn't get any clicks. Often it's because you don't cover that query in your content. So you want to add that query and describe it in your content. And then slowly, hopefully you will start to get clicks on that query. So that's why it's super important to set these things up. You can also set up Microsoft Clarity if you want to record your visitors to see exactly what they're doing on your website. But this is not mandatory. And the eighth point is to create a topical map. And this is a huge step. So ensure that you break it down over a couple of days. But basically what you need to do is you need to collect all of the topics that your website is about and divide it into main topics and subtopics. 
And once you have a long list of main topics and subtopics, then you take a subtopic and then you do keyword research for that subtopic. And you basically find all the keywords that you want to write content for in that subtopic. And you exhaust it before you move on to the other subtopic. You want to be an authority in that little subtopic before you move on. And once you've covered all subtopics in a main topic, then you'll automatically also be an authority in that main topic. So that's why this is the right way of building content. And this should be your content strategy from the start. If you write one piece of content in one subtopic, move over to another subtopic and then a third subtopic, you can see what happens, right? Google, they just become confused that they don't know what your website is about because you're not covering the subtopic and the topic fully. You just have some content spread around that is difficult for Google to figure out where to put you in the SERP. The ninth point is that you want to set up an automated site audit. And this you can do completely free using Ahrefs or Website Auditor, which I've previously reviewed. Because a site audit is scanning your website and finding issues. And often these issues are preventing your website from performing the best and sometimes even appear on Google in the search results. So you can easily do this. You just sign up for an account and then you enter your URL and then Ahrefs or website order, depending on what you go with, would scan your website and show you all the issues and even tell you how you fix them. Often it's that you have some pages that doesn't work, you have some issues on a specific page, your images are not working or something else. It will highlight everything, but take it with a grain of salt. Sometimes the warnings you just ignore, but the errors you definitely need to look into and see how you can fix it. Because you can also imagine the user experience once you enter your website, if their image is not working or I click on a link that doesn't work either, I will simply leave your website because it's just a bad experience and that is sending a bad signal to Google. So ensure that you set this up and automate it. The 10th and last step is that you want to sign up for Harrow, Featured.com, SourceBottle and B2B Writer. These are ways for you to get backlinks to your website. And the way that it works once you've signed up is that you tell these algorithms what you're interested in and then they will send you queries. So other websites are going to Harrow, B2B Writer and so on and writing what they need. Maybe they need an expert to comment on a specific topic. And if you're that expert, then you can comment on the topic and they will link back to your website. And that's how you get backlinks. So sign up for these and ensure that you get the emails and look through the emails every single time and answer as fast as possible. Don't use AI to make these answers because they will check all the answers and you will just build a bad reputation if you keep using AI. So answer them with your own words and as the expert you are in the industry, because the more backlinks you get, the easier you will also rank when you start to write content. That's why it's so important. And that's it. Those are the 10 steps that I go through every time I set up a new website or I take over on a website that I want to optimize it. So if you're an established website, you can easily take some of these steps and do as well. Step one to three, you want to be a bit careful with because there was a major step to change on an existing website, but you can still do them. Just be careful and back up your website so you don't experience any issues. And if you need help to any of it, just leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help you. But the next step from here would be to build an SEO strategy. And I've actually done this so you can watch how you do that right up here. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.